Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is number 23 in our ICOM IC7300 from A to Z series. This time we're going to be taking a look at how to connect the 7300 to your PC with a USB cable. We're going to take a look at the importance of a quality USB cable and some of the consequences if you use a cheap one. And then we're going to take a look at making sure your PC can actually see the rig, at least in Windows. So we're not really covering a particular section in the manual this time. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to apologize for the tight video space here and the poor video setup quality, but I really don't want to overcomplicate this because plugging the USB cable in is pretty simple. You've got the USB jack here on the right side on the back of the radio and it just plugs in like that. And I really didn't want to pull my radio out and disconnect all the cables just to show this one part. So that's that part. That's pretty simple. All right, I'm going to keep the camera on the radio here, but I want you to see what happens when I plug in an inexpensive USB cable. So I've got the cable plugged into the back of the rig, and I am about to plug it into the laptop. And it just got plugged into the laptop, and you will notice a whole bunch of birdies all across the 40-meter band. And I think, if I look, they're also on the 80-meter band. Now, you notice they just stopped, or at least a bunch of them just stopped. And I think that's because the there's some communication that goes on when you first put the uh, cable in, and then it stops. Now... I'm going to bring up FL Digi on the laptop. And it does some switching of the rig while it's loading uh, different parameters in. But now, you'll notice those birdies are back. And as you try to do anything, um, you can hear that the, uh, the noise, if I tune across these, those are pretty uh, obtrusive. So, let's swap this cable out and we will try a better USB cable. Okay, let's try our other USB cable that has ferrites at each end of the cable and it is also a much more substantial cable, which I believe indicates that there is some pretty good shielding on it. So it's already plugged into the back of the rig. Now I'm going to plug it into the PC. And you probably heard the little Windows note there. And it's plugged into the PC. And you'll notice no lines going across the display. Uh, maybe just a little bit, but I think those are actually signals. And let's take a look down on 80 meters. And then let me run FL Digi again, just to make sure we're communicating. And it's still pretty quiet, except we have uh, some actual signals going on here. So, no noise. So, this is an illustration of why it's really important that you carefully pick your USB cables. You want to get one that is shielded and that has ferrite filters at each end of the cable to keep RF from uh, getting back into the rig through the USB connection. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, cables that we used for those two connections there. This is the first cable that I used and if you look closely you'll see it's fairly thin. There's no um, ferrites or any kind of filter blocks at each end of the cable 
And if you look at it pretty closely, I'm not sure this will show up on the camera, but you can actually see the wire twist of the wires inside it, which makes me think that it's probably not shielded at all. So that was the noisy cable. Now, I can't show you the whole one because the back's still plugged into the radio. This is the cable that's currently plugged into the radio. It is quite a bit thicker. In fact, here, if you look at them side by side here, you can see that the cable itself is thicker. I'm sure that's the shielding. It's got a substantial toroid filter on the end, and uh, that made all the difference in the world. So when you're getting a USB cable to hook your rig up, be sure that you look carefully and make sure you get a, uh, a high-quality cable. Okay, before we look at how to use any of the uh, ham radio software to actually work with the 7300, let's just take a quick look at determining if your computer is seeing it. Now, I've actually got it unplugged again here. And in Windows, this will be different, of course, for Mac or for Linux, but in Windows, to, de to determine if your drivers are loaded correctly and your computer is seeing the 7300, we're going to go down here and we're going to type in Device Manager. I should mention that this is Windows 10, and there it comes up in the search panel. So we're going to click on Device Manager, and then... If you notice, uh, what I'm looking for is COM and LPT ports, and it doesn't even show up here because I don't have any other ports like that on my computer right now. So I'm going to plug this in. And actually, you heard two beeps. So now you see this ports COM and LPT showed up. And I'm going to click the down arrow, and here it is, Silicon Labs USB to UART Bridge COM4. So on my machine, it installed as COM4. It may install as a different COM number depending on how your machine is set up and if you have other devices. Um, but the key thing you're looking for is this Silicon Labs. And then if we right-click on it and click Properties, uh, says it's working properly. That's certainly nice. Port settings, and the default is 9600, 8 bits, none. This, you can set this to almost anything you want, but you're best off to leave it at the defaults. That's what most software is set up for. And then one other thing we're going to do is go over here to this power management tab, and it says allow the computer to turn this device, turn off this device to save power. If this is checked, you probably want to uncheck it, particularly if you have a laptop and you're going to be doing things where you're going to leave it connected to your rig running, you know, FT8 or PSK or something where you might want to leave it on monitoring for a long time or you're logging uh, a bunch of traffic that you want it to keep going. You don't want your computer to turn off the serial port. Um, that you're using to control the rig. So, and if you're using it on battery power and your laptop on battery power, that is, and you do want to save power, well, go ahead and leave that checked. But if you're going to leave it sit for extended periods and you're wondering why you can't control your rig all of a sudden, this could be why. Then the other thing that we're going to look for is audio inputs and outputs because the 7300 has two different devices on USB that it's connecting. One was the COM port that we just looked at. And the other is, there should be a microphone and a speaker. Now, you'll see a bunch of them here. I happen to know that microphone 2 and speakers 2 USB audio codec is actually the 7300 because this four, microphone 4 USB codec is actually my mixer um, that I'm using for my recordings and the ones that I use the one that I use to record uh, rig audio so I have um, the microphone here we can just for grins look at this and there's not really any settings you need to worry about in here but it is connected and it's working properly and same with the speaker the device is working properly so my rig appears to be connected but that's if you're having difficulties you want to look at the audio inputs and outputs 
and you want to look at for ports, COM and LPT, and it should show up as this Silicon Labs USB to UART bridge. Well, that was quite a bit of material for just plugging in two ends of a cable. That's all we're going to cover for this time. Next time, we'll take a look at the various settings on the radio for adjusting USB parameters, and then we'll take a brief look at using the radio with a couple of different pieces of software. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing. You can do that easily by pressing the button on the bottom right-hand corner of the video toward the end. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.